We hear a lot about Explorer yachts these days. Well, I'm here to show you the absolute real deal. This is an Arxon 85. It's a custom built yacht. It's built out of aluminium and it is absolutely incredible. And I'm going to give you two statistics that just back up the Explorer credentials of this one and then we'll go on board and I'll take you into the details. The first thing to tell you is that this yacht has more range, it'll go further on its tanks than any other yacht we've ever featured on Aquaholic and I include 250 foot super yachts in that. The second thing is that this is an MCA category zero yacht. What that means is that you could charter this, although it's not actually a charter yacht, it is configured and specced to charter specification to go anywhere in the world. So charters or charter specifications tend to be within certain ranges of land, not this one. This is quite simply anywhere. It's incredible. It's built out of aluminium. It's 12 millimeters thick under the waterline, eight millimeters above. And an interesting fact about that is the fact that they have built this out of between 40 and 70% recycled aluminium. And the interesting thing again about that is the fact that they've been very careful to select that from a recycling center that runs off renewable energy because of course with recycling, it can actually take a lot of energy that defeats the object in the first place. But we're gonna go on board. I just had two hours briefing on this one. There's so much stuff to talk about, all of it incredible. And I can't wait to show it to you. So we'll head up this way. Now I mentioned it as a custom build. This is actually the second one that they've built and it's very much to own a specification so pretty much everything on here because it is aluminium and therefore they're not constricted to mouldings pretty much everything is configurable so for example this particular boat's headed for warmer climbs so they've gone for more outside seating areas um, but the layout everything you can spec how you want i think what i'm going to do is take you around the decks first of all and then we'll head on inside. The inside of this is lovely actually and very different to the outside. The finishes on the outside of this, this owner has chosen to go for it completely plain bare aluminium which gives it real character. But if you wanted, I don't know, like a painted finish or something like that, then you can have it. This is storage in here. There's a massive locker here. This is an owner's boat. It is uh, got all this gear on board, so there are certain areas that we're not going to go into, and one of them is this deck locker, but 99.9% .9 of this we're going to show you. This is interesting. These are made by a foundry in uh, London, and each one is different. So whichever yacht you're on, these are all slightly different, which is lovely. We'll head on forward. I'll take you around the deck. There's another thing, in fact, that is configurable. This has got the Treadmaster deck. If you wanted to have wood on there or whatever else you wanted, of course, you can have it. And then we come right up to the bow. Again, I mentioned this designed for warmer climbs. So they've gone for an outside seating area. They expect to do most of their eating outside. And so that's got this sort of setup. And in fact, there are short table legs for that. So you can drop that down, make that into a sunbathing area if you like. The other boat that's been built doesn't have that. So again, it just depends what you want. This is quite neat. All these lockers built into the combings here, you can see, have got draining sections. So we put wet ropes and things in there, they just drain. And in fact, you can also see the short legs for the table there. We're going to keep moving on this one. There is an awful lot to talk about on this, and all of it is fantastic. So we'll just keep going and I'll try and get out as much of the information as I've absorbed to you. This crane here, is demountable if you want to take that off you can and in fact you can use that to lift a small tender on and put it onto here if you want to or there's a larger tender on the boat deck aft if we come up here i'm just going to show you briefly in here this is the forward locker if i undo that fella there like so you will see Now, one thing you'll find is watertight doors. We'll see a lot more of that when we go through the accommodation shortly. But you've also got access to the anchor chain lockers. And you can see some of the construction of the boat now in places like this. So that's just a storage area for fenders, warps, well, whatever you want to keep in there, of course. And access. So let's drop that one back down. And close that up again. There we go. I'm going to take you up onto the bow drop that back in there some serious anchor kit on here now one of the things that they stress is that in terms of the coding for that zero rating there is a certain minimum standard of things like um, 
anchors, for example, and what they've done with this is gone, okay, that's the standard we need to be at to get the code rating. Now let's go above it. Let's go way above it. So for example, these anchors, the rating should allow you to anchor in very windy conditions. They're saying, well, okay, what if you've got a gale? <laughs> and what if you're somewhere really exposed and you need to anchor? So they've up specced these anchors. They're actually ultra marine anchors. And what you've got there is an 80 kilogram and a 130 kilogram anchor. And you've also got 130 meters of chain for each anchor. Because the whole point of this boat is to go anywhere. And you need to be then prepared when you get there to be able to deal with whatever you find. But look at that. That is a serious piece of kit. Solar panels up here, we'll talk about that when we go up onto the upper deck, I think. And then the anchor windlasses are here. Let's head on back down this side. Look how deep this is. It's designed that when you move around it, you are very much in this yacht and not on it. We've got a pantograph door that comes out here from the accommodation. We'll see the inside of that, of course. Look at these bollards. So much of this boat is specced to commercial standards. So that's why you've got these big, chunky bollards. These are just for the spring lines. Obviously, you've got the main bollards then fore and aft as well. But yeah, it's a proper, serious offshore piece of kit. Boat deck is here. We've got a high field tender on here. I'm not sure what size it is. I think it's about five and a half meters. But what's interesting with this is it's an aluminium hull rather than GRP, <laughs> which is neat. And this deck is all reinforced right the way across, not just where the tender is, but you've also got it over in areas like this because you might be using one of these boats for uh, research expeditions. You might want to put a big container on the aft deck here, crane that on, needs to be able to support it. The other thing that you'll find is these soft patches, what they're called soft patches here. The idea of these is the engines are underneath here. It means that these can be removed easily to get the engines out. And you'll see that right the way through. The idea is that the kit that's in and around the boat, generators, whatever else, if you need to get it out, it's been built so that even if it's further forward, there are soft patches in the floor and that kind of thing. So you can get stuff in and out without doing anything destructive. And then finally, I mentioned these booms that come out here and out here now of course this will lift the tender on and off but another thing that these will do is that you can configure flopper stoppers <laughs> off of those and what they basically are is you swing those out through 90 degrees and you lower in metal plates into the water so when the boat is is stationary they go in like this or be more precise like this and then as the boat starts to rock it pulls them out and reduces the roll so it does have zero speed fin stabilizers but if you don't want to use those then you can use the flopper stoppers and it's all about keeping power consumption down and again we'll talk about that when we go inside and you can see the winches for these are here and the lines that control them let's head on in it's really interesting to see how commercial this yacht looks on the outside and then you come in here and you're into a completely different sort of zone, aren't you? What I think we'll do is we'll head on up, first of all, and then we'll work our way down. So if we come up here, this is taking us up to the upper deck. And what you also find here, then, is the bridge. So a very nice area here can be used for dining or just sitting around and chatting. Um, the table, actually, is height adjustable you can see the leg for it there so you can drop that down and make that into a day bed or indeed an off watch berth for at night uh, if you're doing a long distance passage you might find that a skipper wants to sleep there whilst off watch this owner wanted to have a proper separate chart area so he's got it and then up here well this is the business end normally you have a single door on the outside on these this boat's been specced with a door on both sides. Again, it's all owner specification. From the layout to the doors, it's whatever you want, they'll do it for you. If we come right up here then, you've got some pretty serious navigation kit across here. Chatting away to us. <laughs> At the minute we're on radar and then we've got um, charts, as you can see, across there. The operating system for the yacht is over here on the end one. And from here, we can go into things like power management is here, for example. So we can see voltage, frequency, current, all that sort of stuff, where it's coming from, where it's going. We can go into exterior lights. We can go into uh, engines. 
discs that obviously is giving you all the gauges for the engines. Fuel system is on here. Now there's a couple of things to mention on this. The first is that all of this stuff, anything that's switched from here, can be switched manually as well. There are separate circuit breakers for it. If this all went down, if the software packed up, if the computer packed up, everything that is controlled from here can still be controlled. The other thing to mention is that even with regard to things like this, the bunkering, you can, and we'll talk about this a bit more in the engine room, um, all this you can control from here, but again, you can control it separately, so you don't need to rely on this system. Fresh water, that's controlled from here. All of the water on here is a drinking water standard, but there's an extra purified tank for drinking water that's also remineralized because when you do reverse osmosis to get rid of the salt, you lose the minerals. So that water is actually remineralized for you. Uh, wastewater is here and it has a sewage plant for dealing with uh, waste as well. We'll see that. Even things like the doors and the hatches, you can see here what's open, what's closed. And what you can also see here is all the different watertight compartments. So there are six separate zones, all connected by watertight doors. When they're closed, you could have a hole breach and completely flood one of those compartments and it wouldn't affect the running of the yacht. So it's, again, absolute worst case scenario. You know, even if you put a hole in the hull, it's not going to stop you. It's a proper, serious, go-anywhere machine, this. Let's go back to uh, what haven't we seen. Vents are on here. Um, so we've got engine room temperature, intake fan, exhaust fan. So everything, all configurable from there. And then across here, of course, we have got the controls for all this stuff. Um, you might think there's no steering wheel. In fact, there is. <laughs> Would you believe it's this? That is actually the steering wheel for the yacht because in reality you don't really use that you tend to use the engine and the thrusters or the engines and the thruster for when you're in port and we have to see of course you're an autopilot but nonetheless that's where that is let's press on back a bit further and show you some other stuff another thing i want to show you actually is we've got communications over here again some serious communications it's not just your standard vhf radio but look at this down underneath here this it's designed to take proper Admiralty charts. I can't remember the last yacht I went on that was able to take proper Admiralty charts. Oh, it's serious kit, isn't it? Let's head back and out and round. We've got a bar area over here. So this is mostly storage in places like this, but there's also fridges down that end. There's a sink underneath here, and this has one of these special corking, I think they're called, hot taps there, so you can get boiling water straight out of there if you choose to. The other thing we've got here actually is blinds. If I push, if I find the right button, there we go, you see them right at the front there? The blinds coming down. So all of the blinds are all powered on here. It's a fantastic meld of like commercial ship, but also luxury yacht. It's amazing, isn't it? Look at this as well. We've got um, Sonos sound system in here. You can see the speakers are up there. There's also a uh, TV area and I'll show you that. That's down on the main deck. If we come on back a bit further, we can come out on the back end of the upper deck. Another lovely dining area out here, sheltered with the overhang. That's a folding table so you can fold that out and make that twice the size. You can obviously put a chair at each end and sit everybody around there if you want to. We can see here now these booms that go out. So as I say, they will lift the tender and you can use that one on that side for lifting something onto there. But also, as I say, you can swing these right out, lower the like big plates into the water and as the boat rocks, it provides resistance. Flopper stoppers, <laughs> that's a great name, isn't it? Let's press on around this one. You're seeing again, back to that sort of slightly commercial route where you've got fire dampers here, we've got life rafts on show on the outside, ready to go. Wing stations are here as well. In fact, there's one on the back I should have shown you, I'll show you in a minute. So these are um, enabling you to control the boat, obviously, if you're docking somewhere like this, you can actually watch the boat in from here. This is like a, a um, a John Boy system. What this is, it's like a little one-person life raft. If somebody goes overboard, you can throw that in, and it's just a thing that allows them to get into it. It self-inflates, but also allows you to pick them up and get them back out of the water with it. And again, that's where these cranes come in useful. The sort of thing you would hopefully never need, 
nice to know it's there. Massive wipers even on these side windows, so you've always got great visibility. And you might be able to just see these lines because these windows are also heated. So even if it's somewhere very cold and wet, they won't mist up. And while we're here, we'll step on up and we'll take a look at the solar panels because they're right the way across here and they're on the front as well, I'll show you in a second. Um, I think up to six kilowatt, if I remember rightly, of power from these solar panels. Then right on the top, we've got the air horns, we've got the twin radars, searchlight, camera, antennas, um, GPS receivers, all of that sort of stuff up on the top. So the little chap right on the very top looks like a, a broomstick <laughs> that's crashed. That's actually a lightning conductor. So if it gets lightning, it funnels it down through there and out harmlessly around all the complex electrical kit. <laughs> There's no stone unturned with this. It's designed to go out and stay out. It's quite remarkable. OK, let's press on back down this side. Another wing station there. Another life raft just there. This is engine ventilation here. So that's where the, um, the engine room gets its air from. And that's the wing station. In fact, I'll show you this one because they're all the same. There we go. Engine controls, thruster controls, horn. Just allows you to manage the boat from there. And the other thing that we have here then is this takes you up through that hatch up onto the top and, uh, and gives you access to all that electronics that we saw, the nav gear and that sort of stuff. So that's the upper deck. Pretty immense, isn't it? Look at this sort of stuff here. So we've got little science thing as torches in there, fire hoods are in there. Again, it's that meld of sort of luxury with all this sort of stuff, and yet that almost commercial vibe with things like that. It is a boat designed to be used and designed to be used anywhere. And evidence of that is here because this is the door where we came in. This is quite neat. There's a little stool that comes out from here. I can find the catch for it. Oh, there we go. You see the legs that come out to support it so that when you come in with your wet weather gear and your boots on and things you've got somewhere to sit and change and what they've done is they put the day heads here and that can also then be used as a wet locker so you can hang up your wet weather gear in there if you want to and of course the loo and the sink and that sort of stuff is in there but the other thing they've done rather cleverly is they've put a pocket door in here so if i push that little fella there that will slide out. Now what this allows you to do is close that off and that means that you can keep this area. If it's a very cold area, people can be coming and going, they can be using the loo, they can go up to the bridge, they can come out here, but it stops all the cold air blasting into there every time somebody comes through this door here and opens it. These doors incidentally, you can see how this closes. This one here, when we move it, you see how it's moving these ones down here? So it's a very, very weather-tight door. You can see the rubber seal for it there as well. If we open that one again. There we go. This now is taking us down onto the main deck. Now again, all very owner configurable. Now because this is headed for warmer climes, they didn't want a big dining area inside here. You can have it if you want. They chose to just go for this little snug here opposite the galley. And again this galley has been designed so that it's small enough that it don't get thrown around when the weather is bad, but it's big enough that people can get past if somebody's here then somebody can get through to get to the, the dishwasher or whatever else. So again a lot of thought has gone into this and you'll notice that the equipment, it's Miele, but it's all professional standard. You'll see that in things like the washing machines as well. It's all designed to work and carry on working. Sinks here, of course, again, with one of these KUKA um, boiling water <laughs> dispensers. I can't think of the right word for it. Tap, I suppose. And then again, we've got the Miele oven here. We've got the, um... come on brain. We've got the hobs on the top there. Um, microwave up here. Fridge is here. Really good size. And if we head on forward again, this then is the saloon area. Now on the boat number one, I believe I'm right in saying they had this as a dining area. And again, this comes back to 
owner configuration. This owner wanted this as a really big, comfortable family area. You've got an ottoman here which connects into place so it doesn't fly around, but also you can disconnect it and move it around to seat more people. There's a TV that comes out from over here, so that can make that into a really nice zone just for relaxing. Put a couple of beanbags out there and everyone can just sit there, watch a movie and have fun. And then there's another lower helm position here. Not really for regular use, but it does mean that if the weather was particularly bad, the boat was rocking around a lot, you might want to be a bit lower in the boat. You can operate it from here. So you've got engine controls here. You've got um, bow thruster control here as well. The operating system for the boat is on here. And this then will just completely close down. So it just makes that into a nice little desk area when you're not using it. And again, you've got the wipers down here. Worth saying, actually, that the vision out of this boat is fantastic. And I didn't point it out, but up on the upper deck, you've got pretty much 360 degree vision all the way around. It's very impressive. Worth mentioning as well, as we come round, that there are freezer drawers around the place. So, for example, here and down underneath. So obviously you want plenty of cold storage, considering what this boat is supposed to do. Let's head on down here. Again, a lot of different configurations down here. Pretty much unlimited, really. This is what this yacht has. We'll head forward. Now, worth pointing out, again, watertight doors, properly watertight doors. Look at the way that these, when the door is shut, connect. So it doesn't just lock on this side. It actually comes all the way around, down the bottom and the sides, absolutely locks into place. And clearly, for a proper watertight door, that is what you need. Let's go right to the front and work our way back. It's the best way to do this. Now, I mentioned those soft parts of the deck. These wardrobes here, they're not actually part of the structure of the boat, they're separate units. So you can take those out, move them out of the way. And then this is designed that you can actually get the floor up, take the ceiling panels out, get the soft patches out. If you wanted to fit a gyro stabilizer, it could then be lowered into place down through there and it's all put back together without any major destructive work, just by dismantling. As I say, this particular boat doesn't have one because it has fin stabilizers, but if you wanted it, it could be done. Another watertight door here. That's how you get with those watertight compartments. It's come right up through. Now this can be used however you want. This could be a crew cabin or it could be a guest cabin because everything is done to the same standard. So obviously it's an 85 foot yacht, so quite often this will get run by a couple, particularly if it's not being chartered, if it's privately owned, if it's chartered, you might want more crew. Well, in that case, you can use areas like this. And then doorway here through, obviously, <laughs> doorway. <laughs> in case you don't know what a doorway is, you've got the ensuite there with a separate shower. Like so. Very nice. And thusly. <laughs> not like so, what am I saying? There's another one here. Now, this boat is in the process of being uh, configured, so there's a lot of gear around the place at the minute, but you've got bunks in that, similar sort of arrangement. Um, you've got the ensuite up through there, and there's another doorway then. You can just see through there and round another watertight door, and that's back into that bow locker that we saw. From the outside, remember I lifted that hatch up at the bow, down into that compartment? Well, that's another way into there, so you don't have to go up onto the deck and through. You can get to it from there. So two cabins up here. And then if I spin right on round and head back, there's those two wardrobes that we saw. All of these floor sections, again, all designed to be got up easily so that if you're doing any engineering work, you can get to stuff. Two more cabins back here. Now these are the same. This one's a double and this one's two singles. But I say they're the same because this is actually, you can see it here, this is two beds move together. So what you can do with this, if you want to, is take that bedside cabinet out, slide that bed across. You can see the track for it on the floor just here. Put the cabinet back in the centre and then that's giving you two singles. Wardrobe's in behind here. <laughs> I'm forbidden to open any of them because I say a lot of owner gear on this one. It is a privately owned yacht. Waiting to leave actually. I think it's leaving really shortly. Uh, en suite here. Toilet and the shower. And if you cross the corridor, 
very similar deal over on this side there we go i love this interior color scheme with this pale wood that looks really good doesn't it very very nice again same deal take the uh, take the bedside cabinet out move the bed across to that side and you've got that then dropping into this side and you've got a double cabin rather than two singles you can have a pullman here if you want so you can have a third bed this one doesn't have it but it's an option wardrobe in behind the door there en suites in here Excellent. Okay, let's press on back a little bit further. So they put a rail down through here because, of course, it might be rough. You know, <laughs> if you're doing serious, serious offshore work, you need to, be, need to be prepared. Another cabin here. We'll come back to that one, actually. I'm going to show you the owner's cabin, first of all. Biggest in the boat, obviously. You've got the little desk area here. Nice little area. Tuck yourself away with a good book windows on here not massive because of course again this has got to be super super strong so you have got the view out but they're not the great big massive picture windows because the priority for this yacht is absolutely all about strength wardrobes all the way down this side and then if you come right on back the ensuite is back here very nicely done isn't it big shower over on this side nice okay let's back up a little bit from here come on around pocket door here so you can obviously <laughs> close this off for privacy that's superb isn't it if you come on around here the captain's cabin is over on this side double bed i think i'm right in saying this one's run by a couple so a captain and his wife run the boat and you've got things in here then like see the little fruna display down there so the operating system and that kind of thing can be accessed directly from here again it's all to guest cabin standard it's not scaled back for the crew it's exactly the same and the reason i say this one to last is because of this watertight door back here because this is where it starts to get super interesting wardrobes on this side ensuite is here Again, the separate shower, again, the toilet and the sink and so forth. But come and check this out. This is the lithium battery bank. I ought to mention as well, actually, these watertight doors, they're not just watertight, they're pretty much soundproof. If I close that over, all the noise from there is completely gone. You can hear the fan running. I wonder if I can turn that off and just demonstrate. I think it's on a timer so it's not going to stop but yeah these are incredibly soundproof so all that noise from that apartment you might have hopefully heard the difference there so this is the lithium battery bank now the idea of this is that an awful lot of this yacht will operate without needing the generators so that solar um, solar array that we saw up on the top will charge this also there are some very serious cruising alternators on the engine so they can keep this charged up the idea being that an awful lot of the loads overnight can be operated obviously you want everything running if you want air conditioning and tv and hobs running and all that sort of stuff you're going to probably need to have the generators running but for more general loads it means that you can run just off of this via inverters and the inverters are tucked away up in places like this now this area there's a massive amount of safety systems built into all of these they're all managed and this room is even climate controlled to keep a precise temperature because obviously all of this stuff it's all marine grade it's all proper top end stuff let's go a bit further because the next door it's worth mentioning as well this whole area here is completely isolated we have a watertight door on that side and we have a watertight door on this side there's fire suppression in here as well this is a completely isolated area again it's absolute belt and braces should never be necessary but it's there just in case if you're a long long way offshore stuff like that is reassuring and also what's reassuring is the amount of redundancy 
that you're seeing on this yacht. So again, not just in terms of the mechanics keeping the boat going, but in terms of keeping the people on board going. So these are water makers, reverse osmosis desalinators. There are two of them, so that if something packs up, you can carry on going, and you'll see that theme throughout the whole boat. Generators, two of those across there, for example. We're going to go right round this one because this is fascinating. Now, an interesting thing to point out is just how big this whole engine space is. And the reason for that is because they want to make sure that everything can be got out easily, got around easily. And as they said to me, you know, you could have made this quite a bit smaller. You could have cramped up a lot of the equipment in here to make it smaller. And you could have had a much bigger owner's cabin. But if that's your priority, a bigger owner's cabin rather than accessing your gear, this probably isn't the boat for you. This is designed for people who are really serious about wanting to make sure that they can get to everything and keep everything running. Chili units, the whole boat will operate from one of these, but there are two of them, again, for the same reason. And we can come right on back here. This is the hot water system. You see there's the immersion heater here, but there's also an immersion heater there, but also you can heat that through the diesel system as well. So again, it's backup upon backup upon backup, just to make sure that everything will keep working. And of course, the other important thing to talk about down here is the engines, and they're here. Scanio engines on this one, 350 horsepower each. Now that doesn't sound like a massive amount for an 85 foot yacht. And the reason for that is because we're used to big princesses and Fairlines and Sunseekers that have big multi-thousand horsepower engines in order to do 30 knots. This boat doesn't do 30 knots, this boat does 14 knots. It's a displacement boat. It's designed to stay in the water and cruise economically and efficiently. So efficiently, in fact, that this at nine knots is only using 25 litres per hour in total, not per engine, in total. And that's why at that speed, with 18,000 litres, I can't remember the exact amount, but it's around 18,000 plus or minus, you're looking at 7,000 nautical miles of range. 7,000. We haven't had a yacht on Aquaholic that will do 7,000 nautical miles before without needing to be filled up. That is absolutely remarkable and that really speaks of what this boat is all about. If we come across here, we can see the sea chests. The idea of these is this is where the water intakes come through from underneath the hull. So it might be for cooling water for the engines, it might be for the air conditioning system. Look how much of this pipework is metal work. This is all designed to last. These are the sea chests. These fellas here allow you to blow back down through. So the water, the seawater comes up through these chests and then out and round to wherever it needs to go to. But if you were somewhere that was icy and you're starting to block up with ice, you could put a high pressure hose on there and blast backwards, blast whatever's come in and start blocking up out and everything everything on the boat will run from just one of these although there's two it'll run from just one which means that you can deal with one if there's a problem whilst running from the other one and these tops here are above the water line so you can take the top off and the water doesn't it'll only come up as far as the water line it doesn't come up out and through let's carry on a bit further lots more to talk about here This is the sewage treatment plant, so it actually is able to deal with its own sewage on board. And if we come forward again, you can see there's an oily water tank here, so that can be stored. Hydraulic power unit up on the top. And this is particularly interesting up here because now we are up to uh, fuel tanks. So this is the port day tank, there's a starboard day tank as well, that's what the engines run from, but then the bunker tanks are built into the hull low down and further forward. And they run through filtering systems, you can see these big filtering systems here, these are between the bunker tanks and the day tanks, so the fuel that ends up in your day tanks is pre-filtered and fresh and clean, and then from there of course it's going through more filters before it gets to the engine. Now these can be pumped via that system that we saw, the operating system, and I mentioned that if all else fails, you can actually deal with everything manually. That's what this is for. This is a manual pump, so that if all the electrics failed, you need to get fuel into this tank so you can run your engines from the bunker tank, you can pump it all manually. You can pump anything from anything to anything manually via that. 
Let's come on around a bit further. Generators I mentioned, they're here. This is all the electrics, all the manual backup switching for the electrics. So again, we saw that operating system, but if everything else fails, you can come down here and everything can be switched and open these cabinets and get at everything and switch everything from there. Let's come around a bit further. These we saw, but I want to talk to you about the drive systems because these engines run through V drives and you can actually see them down here. The shafts come out of the engine, the power comes out of the engine, goes through a V box and then comes back. You can see it down that one there and out through the hull. But the, uh, the propellers and the rudders are behind skegs, big solid skegs. Um, and what I mean by that is, how can I explain that easily to you? Uh, if you imagine your propeller is here and your rudder is here, the skeg is a section of hull like a keel that's in front of them, so that if you were to hit something in the water, it would push it down and under the rudder and the propeller. But the other thing it allows it to do, it's not something you want to do regularly, but you can do, is you can actually dry the boat out because it'll sit down on those skegs and protect the rudder and the propeller, or rudders and propellers, I should say. Obviously, there's two of them. So if you were somewhere really, really remote, you needed to get to the hull, you could actually dry the boat out. So <laughs> put it somewhere and wait for the tide to go out, basically. There's not much going to stop this boat, is there? <laughs> Let's press on a bit further. So we can come right back here. Another watertight door. You can see how this has so many separate watertight compartments. And this then takes us into the lazarette. We've got a compressed air system, running everything from the air horns on the boat, for example. Anything that requires compressed air runs from there. This has got access straight up into the cockpit. So that's another route out from here, either for emergencies or just simply for loading stuff down through here. Laundry facilities. Now, this is interesting. Again, we talk about the sort of the commercial aspect of this. These are Miele professional units. What that means is they look like domestic units, but they are configured for many, many, many more cycles. I can't remember the exact numbers, but you're looking at a lot more use out of these. It means that you aren't going to worry about them going wrong. But the other thing is that these are not just professional, they're also marinized. What that means is they are configured so that even if the boat's rocking and rolling around, it's not going to mess up the washing machines. You imagine taking an ordinary washing machine and shaking it around like that because the boat's rolling. It's going to cause all sorts of problems. These are designed to be able to cope with that. These are dive bottles here. <laughs> for diving, he says, about to state the obvious again. Filter system here for the water. Um, another interesting thing about the water is that um, there is a water purification system. In fact, you can see it down here. And if you were to get contaminated water into one of the water tanks, you could actually move the water around between the water tanks and you could filter it and purify it and get the impurities out of it. So it also means if you're somewhere where you're not 100% sure about the quality of the water you're taking on board, it doesn't matter, it can be filtered and cleaned. Hydraulic tankers here, there are two hydraulic pumps. So this is for things like thrusters and um, the fin stabilizers, that kind of thing. That hydraulic tank is split into two they're two completely separate units. So again, if you have a problem, you can carry on running. We've got a spot zero on here. That's taking all the impurities out of water. So for things like cleaning and that kind of thing, it means that it doesn't leave any impurities behind. Steering distribution. Now, the steering on this can be operated via the hydraulics or it can be operated by the electrics. If absolutely everything else failed, you can attach a tiller onto the rudder stocks and you can come down here and hand steer the boat if you really needed to. You'd obviously stay in touch with the bridge via two-way radios and that would allow you to actually still control the boat even if all of this hydraulics and power and everything went down for the steering. Dive compressor over there to recharge your dive bottles. Workbench, sink down over here. You've got the vice, so if you need to make stuff, mend stuff, whatever else, you're able to do it. This is an explorer in more than just name, isn't it? This is the real deal. Absolutely incredible. And then finally, we've got the door out of the back here. This will take us out onto the bathing platform. Now, the other yacht that they built, similar to this one, the number one, 
that has more of a beach club setup down here. Again, very much down to owner specification in terms of what they wanted. And so this, if we come out through here, brings us out onto the bathing platform. First thing we find is a big dive ladder. And then we've got the actual platform across the back here. Let's go across here. Passerelle, so if you're stern to berthed, <laughs> you can get on and off. And this is where we came on. And I think what we'll do is we'll take a lap right up round to the bow because I think that is the most spectacular part. Little wet bar here. You can configure this as a, a little electric barbecue, whatever you wanted. Again, it's all owner specification. Here we go. And that, my friends, let's come right on up, is the Arxon 85. That's an absolutely incredible yacht, and that has to be the ultimate explorer, doesn't it? That's quite incredible. I want to say massive thanks to the guys from Arxon. They've been absolutely brilliant. They spent two hours with me today going through every aspect of this yacht. It was absolutely incredible. And, uh, of course, huge thanks to you all for watching. Let me know what you think of this one. I think your comments of this should make some fascinating reading. And we'll catch you on another one of these real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.